Well, Lisa Marie, welcome back to Australia. Um, I was at your concert horns BRSL. I thought it was fantastic. Did it feel good as your first one for the tour? Thank you. Um, yes, it was. It was. It was good. It was. I, I was happy because we just came from South by Southwest, where we we were pretty much throw and go, no sound check. It was pretty rugged, so it was nice to have a proper, you know, sound check, a proper venue to play at last night. What made you choose these more intimate venues? I think just because the record's intimate, and I am more comfortable in that kind of a setting, to be honest. Um, so yeah, I mean, the, the record is an intimate record, so there's no need for you know giant anything to be good. I just am more comfortable in that kind of, you know, I don't know, it just it feels more right to be in a sort of where I can really interact with the audience and feel them, their energy, and they can feel mine, and it's you know, so it just feels it just feels right. right your album Storm and Grace. Um, has the involvement of the wonderful Team Bone and Burnett. I, I actually didn't know that when I was listening to you last night. And I thought, gee, this reminds me a lot of the, the soundtrack that I heard on True Detective and so forth. And then I saw the link because he did that as well. He, he is thrilled with this record and everything that you'd written. Was it great to work with him? Oh my gosh, it was so incredible to work with him, with T Bone. I just, um, uh, you know, it was, he's really. He sort of took this paternal role with me, and and um, and I feel like I don't know. He just kind of took me under his wing, and I really needed it at that time in my life. I was kind of, you know, I, my I don't know. I was just was kind of tapped out. So him liking the songs and wanting to take on the project really sort of injected life into me and made me feel, you know, really happy. And I, I was just in awe of him the whole time. What are your earliest musical memories? Are they at Graceland? I would think so, yes. Earliest are from, you know, um, my little 45, I used to have a 45 and playing, you know, little records um, of my father's and the Sweet Inspirations and I remember Neil Diamond in there and Elton John and I mean all those, you know, sorts of things, so definitely. Did you ever pick up the hairbrush and try to sing like Dad? Of course, of course. I, I had hairbrushes and tennis rackets and whatever I could get my hands on <laughs> to sing in, uh, in the mirror. and. You know, I just, I, I loved it at a very, very, very small age. How tough did you have to be to make the decision to pursue a career in music with the shadow cast by your father's career? You really do have to develop a good thick skin, which sometimes I've had and sometimes I don't have. You're always going to get that, well, you would never, unless you were his daughter anyway, and blah, 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 whatever. So it, it's really nice to be, you know, have this particular particularly this record be so critically acclaimed because it is acknowledging my work and that's really what I'm in it for and um, so that makes it all worth it you know in the end and then it makes it worth it when I when I do the meet and greets after and I and I meet people that really love the music and it's done it's really sort of changed their lives or helped them in some way and I get to hear that it makes me really feel like I'm on the right path doing the right thing regardless of all that. What about your inner strength do you find there are times you just run away to hibernate with your family? Absolutely. I mean, that's kind of where England comes in or, you know, I, it's nice to have a retreat somewhere that you can run to. And I think that that's kind of the saving grace of, you know, anybody in this in this industry who wants that sort of thing, who, who doesn't want to live in the spotlight 24-7 because I wasn't really raised like that. That's kind of how it goes now in America anyway, um, where everyone wants to be. You know, if you're not on the cover, you're not the tabloids, they get upset. And it's like I was raised avoid at all costs, you know, try not, you know, try not to get your photo taken and try to avoid it. So um, it is really nice to have a retreat and somewhere to go. You're here with three of your four children and your eldest daughter, Riley, is of course dating an Australian. So you're practically an in-law of ours. <laughs> yes, I guess so. <laughs> She's of course an actress and a model. Were you concerned as a mum when she decided to pursue this kind of life in the public eye? You know, she's got such an amazing head on her shoulders that she's actually, you know, a real sort of rock for me, even. So I don't worry about her as much. She does get, um, she puts everything she has into her work. All I say is, you know, be really, really good at it. Don't mess around and make people think just because you're who you are, you have this job, you know, or whatever, because that's just, um, none of my children are that way, so thank God, because they don't, you know, gloat or run around basking in, in anything. They want to be... You know, I just take what you're doing really, really seriously and give it everything you have, and she really does. So I don't worry about that so much um, with her. But it is what it is. So she, you know, we do have that, you know, where she'll call me and she's stressed out or something's happening. But 
regardless, I think she can handle it, really. Oh, that's fantastic. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thanks for having me.